Hi, TPS students. I uh, hope you're having a great week and I'm glad you chose to do watercolor. Uh, it's a lot of fun. It's um, pretty easy to use. I teach a watercolor class every uh, Wednesday at 3.30. Uh, unfortunately, tomorrow's the one class I'm actually postponing because I'm getting my um, second vaccination and I'm afraid I might be not feeling so good. So I'm um, going to cancel that ahead of time. But so um, I wanted to share with you, you know, we're making these cute little lanterns. Um, this has gotten folded. It's much cuter in person when you first make them. And um, they're even better when they're more colorful. So um, watercolor is one way of doing that. It does take a little patience. I often tell students to work on two projects at once as a watercolor because um, that way you have time to let things dry ahead of time. So anyways, let's get started. I've got um, a few things to show you. So bear with me for a sec. Okay, so it's time to switch my video. I'll turn on a little, um, I don't know if you can hear it. Let's see. Chinese New Year music. We'll see. See how this goes. All right. So my friends, what you want to do is take your paper. If you have, ooh, that's a little loud. If you have um, watercolor paper or a little bit heavier paper, cardstock, or uh, construction paper, even if it's in a different color, it might be better. Uh, coffee paper gets real weak, but um, so I'm using a mixed media paper. I recommended to my watercolor students, we meet on Wednesdays at 3.30 if you want to join us. I think I already mentioned that in the video, but um, not this week, but it's a um, pad that you can get to do your artwork in if you'd like the mixed media pad upside down. Um, I get them with a coupon and they're only like five bucks. So um, it's totally worthwhile. And then you get it all organized and a better quality paper. So what I did is, <laughs> sorry, I know you're fifth and sixth graders, they still need directions, don't you? So I didn't measure this. I just kind of folded it over. I sort of know what the, um, about those same lengths. And how we fold papers for cards and stuff. It's the same kind of thing. Um, you just want to um, line up your edges and make sure you have a straight line and then press down hard. And you probably could roll it back and forth enough where you could tear it off the page. Um, and almost sometimes it's more of a cleaner line than, uh, than a scissors can make because it gets it stuck in the groove. So let's see, all right. So this, why we have to do this is this is for our handle. Now, if you want to just use a whole separate sheet and tear off or, or cut off another size handle, I didn't like that because I don't want to tear on my handle. Um, if you'd like to do that, then, um, <laughs> then you should just use the second sheet and cut off. Um, you're actually going to need two strips because um, later we'll try and put a riddle in there, okay? So I would just cut it. I made a little bit of a rough edge, um, but it's up to you. Maybe you like the rough edge, I thought I would, but yeah, I'd rather it nice and clean. So um, if you've seen my sample, I don't know if you have. This is my plain paper and pencil one. So I just use pencil to draw my image of the um, bam, uh, cherry blossom and then colored in the background, even hand colored the handle um, first and then uh, assembled it together. So this is what our goal is. It's gonna look like this. And they can all string up on a string. They're nice and lightweight that you can hang them in your uh, windows at school. They're really super cute or carry them home. So, um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a little design. Um, what I love about watercolor is um, that it can be a wax resist. So I'm going to do the same kind of cherry blossom uh, motif so that you can see kind of the difference. I'm actually going to draw in white though. Branches, if you remember, will start off nice and thick. Oh, you won't be able to see it at all. I can't see it at all. <laughs> so um, let me draw with pencil first. Um, so I'm going to draw a nice thicker branch coming off the side now. Um, when I've read about how to teach um, how to draw 
tree trunk, they say to think of it, some people, well, one of those people I've read, says you can think of it as tubes, like, um, like a toilet paper tube. But remember, they always get thinner and um, at the end, and they always usually branch off into what I always say are Y's or V's. You see it looks like a letter V or a letter Y. So always remember that they can branch off um, even on itself, like if it's already a branch of a branch of a branch, right? So I'm just adding some long um, branches along the edge. So it's kind of like bamboo, right? And it kind of reminds me of how we've drawn bamboo if you've ever drawn bamboo before. So I'm also gonna draw um, one coming off of through here. And again, I should make those um, tubes. So you can draw it however you like, uh, just keep in mind that it should kind of be a little bit um, wiggly in, in look, most trees are and they always branch off into smaller shapes, um, smaller stems, looking for the water. Okay. So this one I'm gonna bring uh, over here so that it has a little bit of uh, interest over here as well. So again, it's making a V shape. I wasn't doing the tubes. It's easier for you guys to kind of look at that and see. Okay, so here's some um, of the design. And uh, you also can make flowers. I always say to do them, try to do groups of three to five or one or two here and there. But when you just have two, it kind of, it balances it out. They say in art to draw things in three. So I'm just going to draw three little um, circles here. And to make a flower, you can either draw circles around the center circle, right? Three simple loops, just go up and down and up and down and up and down. Yeah, I need to zoom in on this. Oh, let's see. Okay. Ooh, it's scary up close. All right. So um, you're just going to make a circle and then draw loops all the way around as you go. That's how you can make kind of like a daisy. A, um, a cherry blossom is actually more like a loose flower with a center. So you can kind of go around and make a clover, like little cloud, and then touch them together and make a little center. So um, that's kind of what we're looking for. There we go. And um, I am going to, I guess I'm just gonna do my bark in brown since we, um, but what we wanna do is make like a nice dark line. Oops, this is how hard I press my crayons. They don't last me very long. <laughs> All right, so I go around your stem line. Hopefully they're not saying bad words in Mandarin. I'm trusting that they're not. <laughs> okay, did you hear? Oh, look how cute they are. <laughs> All right. I think part of being in art is being exposed to different cultures. And um, I mean, art is a universal language. Have you heard that? Like it doesn't have to be, you don't have to speak the language to understand an artist from a different country. So something to think about, it's kind of cool. It can really bridge world peace. It can um, bring countries together in something similar. All right. So here's our little, um, you know, watercolor beginning crayons resist even more of my love as most of you know, if you have oil pastels, um, those work even better than um, crayons, of course, but I um, know that crayons are more readily available, so we're just using those. They're also less messy, but if you're at home and you have um, pastels, that's awesome. Use them. So coloring your branches, I'd outline them dark first and then color in the center. It kind of just looks a little bit cleaner, right? And you can change your design anytime. Like if you feel like, oh, I'm gonna 
bring this off the page there. Perfect, do it, right? So here we can, um, I'm gonna, maybe I'll use oil pastels for these just to show you the difference in quality, it's crazy. And oil pastels are pretty um, inexpensive. Again, you can go to the store and use a um, coupon and get them for 40% off, sometimes half off. And that's, that's the way to go. That's what I do all the time. All right, so I'm gonna open up my little oil pastels. Ooh, it's pretty, it's like a color, um, rainbow, little rainbow. So see the difference in the intensity of color? Way different. Um, so they're made with oil and um, pigment and they're just much stronger. So I'm gonna use the two different pinks. And why I'm doing, now you could do watercolor first if you were to do this again and you wanted to do it um, you know, yourself and do it again, but um, you have to let all of that dry before you paint. So that's why I ended up going with, um, with uh, crayon first and then doing a wash with watercolor because it'll, um, it'll uh, dry. It won't matter about waiting for it to dry as much. You know, it'll just be for the you know, cuts and stuff. Okay, so let's see, where else can you put some pretty flowers, maybe one's growing right here. So you can draw them, you know, around. That's what I do. I'll just kind of draw little circles around. They should be different sizes, little ones near the end. Maybe they're babies. Maybe they're a little, like a huge cluster. It's yours. Make it yours. You could have little light blue flowers on here too, if you'd rather but I'm sure um, your parents would love to see this. This is a like, really sweet project and relatively pretty easy for what you get. I think it's pretty awesome. So I'm gonna use orange for the centers. I think they actually have yellow or no color. Let's try the yellow, I'm not liking that. Yeah, I like the yellow much better. Just pop a little pop of color, right? Now they shouldn't be all the same size, although most of mine are. I'm just, you know, telling you what you should do. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to do what we should do. Um, since I got these out, I'm gonna go on the bottom. Oh, that's really dark. I didn't mean to pick up one that dark, but I did and it still is. So another thing you can always do too is make some wood pattern in the, uh, in your tree branch. I always enjoy doing that because you can go over and different um, designs and loops and make them go different directions and swirls. So it's just kind of fun. You don't have to do that. Do cherry blossoms have leaves? Not really, um, not that I've seen. What about you? Have you seen leaves on them? I don't think so. Excuse me. Okay, I think we need a few large ones, maybe two, three. Mm. All right, friends. So let's check this out. <laughs> okay. And it's nice to kind of keep up with your uh, messes on the sides so that don't have a whole lot to clean up later, right? So now it's time for some watercolors. If you need any, please just email me. Um, we don't have enough for everybody, but I do have some extra. 
that I'd love to share if you want some at home and to join us um, with watercolors anytime or just experiment at home. Um, it was really nice with school to pick up some to share. So let me know if you're interested. Those are a little too purpley. So I'm just gonna use the standard watercolors from the school and I'm gonna get a nice brush out and nice clean water because you don't wanna use um, dirty water and have it uh, poison our picture. So I'm actually just gonna use this because my water containers are not um, pure. And I'm gonna go to the blue and I'm just gonna take a lot of blue. And um, so you should have paper towels ready paintbrush, water, watercolors, and something to a surface to uh, paint on. And I'm just going to go and see that right over the, um, the crayons and the, uh, whatchamacallit, the oil pastels. And you see how it resists? Isn't that cool? Oh, it's my, one of my favorite things to do. I think it's so neat. So um, sometimes you can keep this in mind. The sky is um, often uh, different shades at the top or bottom, depending on the time of day. So you could make like a little sunset picture here. You could make it a faded blue. I'm just going the traditional blue, um, but you could look up Chinese characters and um, add those, or I don't know what I'm talking about. It's hard to talk to myself for like a half hour. So I'm gonna be quiet while I finish this up. Let's be careful, go around the edges. That's where that white crayon was and it won't color. I didn't go over it with brown. I could fix it later if I wanted. I wanted to show you guys if you feel like it's too much color, you always can lift it up a little bit. It'll pull up some of the color. You can use it to rag and make a pattern. You see that? So it's up to you what you want to do. I kind of like this. Um, but I think it's good for you guys to see your copy paper probably will not take a second load if you have copy paper. Um, if you're using watercolor, you're welcome to go ahead with me. If it's just copy paper, you might want to take a break or start a new one at this time. So I'm going to go darker maybe on the top here. See how you can lift it up. It's a kind of a sky look, right? Now, um, I'm going to take a little fan or a blow dryer. If you're home, you can do this if you're in class. You might be able to, depending on what your teacher says, you may be able to put it outside or put it in the sunshine or near a fan and it might dry faster. I wish I knew how to fast forward this for you guys. I do not know how to do that. So I'm going to pause my video. I'm going to continue fanning this and you'll be able to see that these small water reflections um, will dry up and the paper gets its integrity back. So when you wet it, it weakens the paper. So I'll be back. Okay, so um, like magic, movie magic, this is all dry now, um, no shine left. Um, this is when you can add your adornments uh, that we will then measure and cut those uh, lantern lines. So 
let's switch cameras again, please. Oh, stop my video so I don't make funny faces. Okay, see how it was shiny? And now it is not. So it is dry. Um, so what we could do is, um, oh, I wish I had better sequins. I only have these little weird square rhinestones. So if you have any yarn, any random sequins or stickers or anything you want to put on here, you totally can. So I'm just going to use them like stars, I guess, around. So I'll just glue stick these on. And hopefully they won't interfere much with my um, lines. Actually, with these heavy things, I'm going to wait on my lines. So um, anything else do you want to do? Maybe some outline with black Sharpie marker. That's to do now once it's dry, if you wanted to outline. If you wanted to also, I have on my website some um, Chinese Mandarin characters. So down here, I'll try to recreate the uh, Mandarin character of family. So uh, what these were, uh, actually how the language came, it used to be pictures. So you can almost see a person right there as I'm drawing, right? You see what I'm seeing? And then it has like a V coming down. And the best way to do is to look at the relationship of how those letters, um, fall into each other, what, what they do, where they intersect. That's how I uh, draw, is checking the different um, positions of where things are, if that makes sense. So I'm just gonna go around that family. I thought that would be nice. I don't know if you're hanging up in class, you might wanna take time to put your name on it now. These turn out really cute. I know it doesn't look like much right now, but wait, wait, wait. All right. <clears throat> and you could write Happy New Year, Happy Lunar New Year, Miracle Ox. Miracle Ox is um, supposed to be a pretty good year. Let's hope. Let's hope. Lord knows we need it. All right. So um, dear friends, so now we've got this. So what's really important when you're making the lantern is it needs to have a place on it that you will not cut through. So it holds it together. So, um, and what I do is I take the ruler and I use that as a guide um, for an edge for the top. So I'm just gonna draw a nice light pencil line here. And that's what I'm going to cut up to. And then I'm gonna change my direction of paper and draw soft lines. Now I could even, since we're um, already colored and everything, um, I could use a light crayon. I saw my white crayon around. Yeah, I, I'm gonna check this out and give that a try. Let's see, we do a white line. Can you see it? Yeah, it just smears the other colors, right? Forget that, that's how hard it is, it's experimenting. So I'll drag a light pencil line. And again, I'm using a ruler as my guide. Why take the time to measure? Just use something around you for the lines. Um, they don't necessarily have to be this thick, but we know that it works um, from other projects. So I'm gonna stick with it. You can also use this top edge of your ruler to use as a lineup, you know? It helps you keep your lines straight. If you make sure that that line lines up in that one, then you've got a straight line. Oh, no more Asian, uh, no more Chinese New Year music. I'm actually missing it. <laughs> All right. So there we go. So then what we want to do is we're going to take our sheet. We, um, we pause if you need to catch up. We've taken a top and we've drawn a border. And when we fold it, we're going to cut up to that line. We don't cut past that and that holds it together, you see? So right here. So when you fold it and then you cut it and it's folded, 
it doesn't cut past that line on the other side either. So you only have to draw it once. Okay, so you should have this line and then all these lines drawn. Then what you're gonna do is take your paper and we're gonna fold it nicely in half. Remember, line up those lines and corners before you press down and make your crease. All right, making my crease, I'm calling it done, making it permanent. And now is the fun part. So now we're gonna carefully take our scissors, open shut them. I know you guys are kind of older, so I don't need to tell you that, but um, cut up to that line there. Okay, so squeeze, 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 cut to the line. Squeeze, 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 cut to the line. Here we go. I'm gonna put on my uh, little music here. It'll be interesting. It certainly keeps me awake. Mm -hmm. Good for us to hear different things and accept them and appreciate them for what they are. Everybody's the same. We're all pink underneath, right? We have more things in common than we don't. All right. So, there we go. Now it's time to assemble our lantern. So, um, oh, before we do, I was gonna do a little ribbon for you just to make it, you know, to the added dormants. Also, I have, um, I'd almost rather use this washi tape. It matches better, doesn't it? So I'm gonna put that on the top. Do you guys have this washi tape? It comes in handy sometimes. I sell it at the craft store again. I've covered a whole um, license plate frame with different ones. I've seen a bike covered with them. It's really a lot you can do with washi tape. It's really quite um, flexible and fun. So I like that because it's uh, already sticking and colorful and I didn't have to glue or make a mess. So remember we were also gonna maybe do these guys. I thought maybe it would be better to wait till after we had our cut marks so we weren't dealing with these. That was a good move, Miss Paulson. So we need to figure out where we want our little sparkles. Now, I don't know what your teacher has on hand or your house. Um, be creative, look around, you might find stuff. Like just the, things are everywhere, just upcycle stuff. Maybe you have an old card that has some sequins on it. That doesn't matter to you or I don't know, something like that. Let's see. So we're going to put one up here. And then I think I'm done with the little um, glitter ding-dongs. Where did my handle go? Did I just like wrinkle it like it's not important? I did. <laughs> so here's my handle. Um, I neglected it completely. I think I'd like to just do a little bit of um, blue watercolor. Oh, look at, see, that's how dirty my watercolors were. Well, all right, that's my watercolor handle. Again, we're gonna wanna let that dry though. <coughs> it went down the wrong way, excuse me. All right, friends, so I'm going to, all you do is wrap it around into a circle. Now, if it's too heavy, you may need more than glue, um, a glue stick. I'm hoping it'll work though, because um, it's just so much easier. Or you can staple, or you can tape. So you just roll it. Line up your, your lines. Oops, sorry, I wasn't in camera there. So you just roll it up and line it up and you have a little lantern. So I think it needs that tape on the bottom to kind of hold it together. Now it is kind of thick, so it's popping a little bit. I'm gonna add a little bit of tape to support the back and the inside. I could, no, I, I was thinking I could flip it over since it, I like the 
um, trim of the tape on the bottom, but uh, that doesn't work with my letter. So I'm gonna add, yeah, I'm gonna add a little bit of washi tape around the bottom. Sorry if you don't have any, maybe if you're using string or ribbon, you might wanna do the same thing. It just really looks so lantern-like with that, like almost like just the real deal. It's kind of cool. I was really amazed with this project. It's so simple and so effective, right? Okay, so here's my little... Now, most lanterns were actually red, but I have a little thing for cherry blossoms. I just think they're so pretty. And then you can put your handle, hopefully your handle looks a lot better than mine. Decorate your handle. <laughs> Here, let me, I'll put my tape on it so it doesn't look atrocious. And that's one of the things about art is you can learn so much about problem solving. So, um, Sometimes I can solve a problem better than most people because I've solved so many art problems. I'm not kidding, it's really true. So I love a stapler right now. I don't have one on my desk, I need one. I could staple it right there or, um, or even the regular tape. So I'm just gonna washi tape it. That's what I've got going right now. Isn't that cute? Oops, tape tour. I hope you're enjoying making yours as much as I'm enjoying making mine. There's one last part of this that I wanted to um, share with you guys is um, a lot of families in their lanterns will also place a, um, a riddle. So on my site, you'll see information about how to write a riddle. What I found in doing my research is the best thing is to, um, to start with your answer. And um, what you wanna do is on a separate piece of paper or whatnot, um, where did my riddle go? It's hiding from me. I have like an elusive riddle. I'm not even joking. It hid from me the last time I filmed this and now it's hiding again. Okay, here it is. My messy handwriting. So this looks a lot prettier in person. Um, so I just wrote my riddle like this and I have it written down. So it says a box without hinges and a golden treasure inside. What do you think that is? A box with no hinges or a lid and a golden treasure inside. It's uh edible is the other hint anybody know it anyone know it it's an egg so you can um i guess just kind of stick a little riddle inside for fun and tape it in there as well um i'm not sure how they used to assemble the riddles i didn't get that far actually but um maybe it'll be fun to come up with the riddles so start with the answer like a heart and maybe it could say it has two bumps and a point and is um, bursting in red, right? And then it's a, a whatchamacallit, a heart. So I'm gonna stop the share and come back over to you here. So this is what it looks like in person, not under that camera, the camera was a little harsh, um, but they can string on little, um, like a light string, it's so cute. So I hope you enjoyed uh, making these or so handsome. You can make a nice handsome looking one. Use Chinese characters. And like I said, mostly red. Um, and I've got some pictures of the Festival of Lanterns. And um, it's more like the Festival of Lights in China um, in other countries. So take a look, learn a little bit about the history. So many uh, cultures, so many countries all celebrate this um, holiday. So um, hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about the um, Chinese culture, uh, Chinese New Year. It's a big deal for them. So happy New Year. Wish you prosperity and good luck in the new year, in the year of the ox. Take care. Bye for now.